so hi guys uh, welcome to this video and after a long time i am making some video so i was quite busy with all of my other tasks but i decided to create video for carbonio ce after its release both uh, in terms of installation and upgradation so that I don't know how much help it will be for you guys but you can take a look at it and definitely the main source of information should be the official documentation do not rely in any other source than official documentation so official documentation should be your main reference point but you can take help and hints from other inst other installation process as well so what i have done today is i am doing uh, an installation from our using our official documentation page so uh, let me bring my official documentation page this is the official documentation page we are going to install 23.11.0 after that when 23.12.0 will be released i will do the same and yeah so all the steps are clearly written here i'm not going to describe all of them step by step as i have separated them and noted in my another notepad for my convenience otherwise if i am going to explain all the things from this page it will be a very long video so yeah definitely this is the main source that you should follow always check on it because Jextras is doing a lot of effort to to make the product complete and very user friendly so yeah do ch check that out so yeah let me minimize that one uh let me see i have if i have anything let me open my uh okay here no okay i can do this here. okay so the server can should i make it full screen view Full screen okay let's make it full screen so for now what I'm going to do is I let me at first let me show you LSD release okay, I'm using Ubuntu 20 by the way currently only ubuntu 20 and red hat enterprise linux 8 is supported or officially supported operating system but as you all know there are all there are many different variants of ubuntu and red hat but i specifically request you to stuck to these two operating systems because if you find an error in other while deploying carbonium in other operating system as the developers and all the resources they're very they're ve they're in a very tight schedule to meet all the expectation of this time frame so that's why it will be very difficult for them to reproduce the scenario and troubleshoot them and get you something that can be helpful for you so for that the time being you can choose between these two robust operating system whatever you prefer ubuntu or red hat it will save your time and hassle so now okay what we are going to do is let's not make it full screen because i haven't 
I haven't uh, make the recording area on the full screen so okay let's check whether my system is updated or not apt update if any update is available or not yes four package update is available uh, you can check it from here apt list upgradable okay let's upgrade them apt upgrade by the way during the installation i will skip the recording quite a few times to keep the duration of this video shorter so that you don't lose interest and you can see and you can watch the full video in a convenient manner so and definitely please feel free to share your comments and feedbacks in the comment section so yeah okay my system is updated so now i am going to what i am going to do is let me show my notepad i'm not going to show my notepad uh, it's kind of messy i have all the drafts the very first thing i'm going to do is configure the jxtrust or the carbonate repository for a specific reason i'm not going to show you how i am going to configure this uh, repository because because if you go to the official documentation page if you go to official documentation page here in step one repository configuration you will find a link if you click the link you will get this page if you fill out this form you will get a notification email where all the instruction will be there with the repository address and everything you can simply follow the instruction of that mail there are two types of instruction one for ubuntu one for red hat you can very easily configure them into your system but is the form filling up the form is necessary yes necessary because that's how they understand who their users are and they send you various not uh, various notification emails various information emails about the update of this product about the changes of the product what's new is going to happen and many other things but if you do not fill out the form they will not have your address and you will you are going to miss a lot of important things that they are going to send you so i will request you to do fill out this form and and so with that let's proceed so now i am going to pause this video configure the extra repository okay by the way let me show you how the notification email looks like if you fill out the form how it will look like so you will get a glimpse of it uh, let me find my email Just a minute, let me so let me download it. Let's see. So this is what 
the email will look like you will get an email come notification installation and on the below of this uh, email you will get all the instruction including the repository link i'm not going to expose the repository link here i request you please subscribe to their forum i will give the li forum link in the description as well as their blog to see the articles and fill out the form whenever you download anything or if your friends or your colleagues download anything please encourage them to download the link by filling out the form so let's not waste our time here so okay now i am going to pause the video so as you can see carbonate repository has been successfully installed on the top of that uh, line I have installed carbonate repository if you follow the email you will have the same message so carbonate repository has been installed i have updated everything now what i'm going to do i am going to do some basic preparational things like uh, i will set the time zone as per my time zone this is dhaka then i am going to set the host name i am going to set the host name the host name is mail.jxtrust.xyz okay host name is set one important thing after setting the host name please do check whether host name minus f shows you the full fqdn or not sometimes it happens that hostname minus f shows you the shorter version of the hostname the short name that is mail if that is the case you should restart the service or if needed further dig down why the hostname minus f is not reflecting the full fqdn because otherwise it will hamper your installation process so that is one thing that you should keep in mind now i am going to modify my host file as per carbonio's recommendation there should not be any ipv6 configuration in the host file so therefore i am going to remove everything from the host file okay have removed everything let's check yes there is nothing so now what i'm going to do is i'll just simply execute this it will set into my host file then I will set this hostname minus i provides the IP address, hostname minus f provides the full FQDN, hostname minus s provides the short name of the hostname that is mail and it will be appended into the etc host. So now let's take a look at the etc host file because sometimes hostem minus i brings not only the ip version 4 but also the ip version 6 let's check no in our case it's okay our hostname is set properly so now what i am going to do is i will do apt update and upgrade again i am going to apt update and apt upgrade why and everything is updated so now everything is done one last thing that i would like to check that is my dns sorry it will be the resolve 
uh, as my VPS provider provides me this DNS name server, they have modified the DNS in another configuration file. I'm not doing anything else here, but if uh, you want, you can set your own DNS server. It can be your local DNS server as well as any public DNS server like 8.8.8.8, .8 whatever prefers you. So, but it is necessary because it will help you to resolve everything during the installation so now i am going to reboot the server reboot now so let's see if we got back our server or not yes our server is live again so now from here after the restarting process begins the actual installation steps that is well, well documented in the official documentation page so i am not as i said i will not explain everything whatever I am doing is written here so yeah so the very first thing what I am going to do is I will install the PostgreSQL the PostgreSQL installation is done Okay, it is in, the installation is done. By the way, let me get your attention to one point. That is, here it says after the installation of this package, you need to modify this file and change this line, specifically this word indent, this method indent to MD5. But what I have noticed so far that if you go there, the line already the method is md5 so my observation is in red in ubuntu the method already set to md5 so therefore you don't have to do anything but in red hat the method is set to indent therefore in red hat Keep in mind that you have to modify this and change that indent method from indent to md5. So as we are using Ubuntu here, we don't need to do anything. We are just going to simply reload the service. Okay. Now I am going to install all the packages. You will get the list of all the packages in the official documentation definitely definitely make sure cross check all the packages that you are installing is listed in the official documentation page because they are updating and adding more packages day day by day therefore you don't want to miss out any package and it will be very tough if we miss out any package and we want if we want to add that package later after completing the full installation process so yeah make sure this package exists in the official documentation page so i am adding this and okay why now it will get all the packages for the sake of this video to keep the video shorter i will pause the video now and as soon as the process reaches 80 to 90 percent mark i will again resume the video so yeah so guys as you can see we read the 87 percent mark so 
let's proceed from here now we are installing the packages by the way let me tell you that uh, if you have any comment or any uh, observation or any kind of suggestion just let me know in the comment so that uh, i can i will try my best to make a video on that and yeah definitely and by the way i will request you request you to join the forum because it is the best place to discuss all of your queries and queries and all of the uh, to express all of your curiosities lots of other system admins are there you will get so many hacks so many way arounds that are that are still not officially available by jxtrust but as you know and as you understand that system admins don't sit around they do a lot of experiments and they do their own things so definitely definitely join the forum i will give the forum link in the description and yeah also after the installation we will check the mail transaction as well as we will install the let's encrypt certificate For the last few uh, days, I I got uh, several posts from different users that they are finding difficulties in installing Let's Encrypt certificate. So, after at the end of this video, we are going to see it how easy it can be. So, okay, our package installation is done now we are going to execute the carbonio bootstrap carbonio bootstrap and by the way it will show you that whether the bootstrap is new or it is an existing bootstrap so as you can see it resolved the ip address uh, if i want to change anything no but one thing i can change that is one the common configuration i want to change the time zone six I want to change it 57 that is Dhaka R and keep everything as it is pressing Y to proceed with the applying the configuration so yeah let's wait so by the way let me tell you something meanwhile that that developing an, an email system takes a lot of effort i know as a user myself as a user if i have to choose an email system i will consider many things financial aspects technical aspects but so far what i have found let me show you my uh, let me show you my okay uh, i don't have it but but the all the other solutions available right now in the market in the open source based those are free community edition no one is near or closer to the carbonio community edition in terms of feature and the beauty of the architecture carbonio community edition uses the mesh technology that is mainly used by all the giant cloud providers like google microsoft and many other cloud platforms aws who manages all their services as a microservice and the communication between those microservices are managed and maintained by the mesh technology so you can understand st still being while being a community edition carbonio community edition still has that technology and no other 
open source and community edition solution has this kind of technology this is just tip of iceberg carbonio the, the architecture of carbonio is kind of unique and it has endless of possibility so i can also understand that maybe what you are expecting and you are facing some challenges but it will be fixed and you will get a fully fledged collaboration platform with Carbonio CE where every demand of you will be fulfilled for, but for that we need to give it some time and definitely you will not regret it so because as i am saying that there are some other providers like um, irate mail mail cow and um, some other some other providers they provide the just simply the basic email contacts and calendars but carbonio is not only e about email contacts and calendars it provides you task it is already working to integrate the chat and it is bringing something more so that's why i am requesting you to fill out the form to stay tuned with all the updates join the forum share your opinion your challenges whatever prevents you whatever bothers you while from migrating from your existing system to carbonio just share your experiences and by sharing we can create a good community and very vibrant community so i'm not gonna bother you with all the speeches so but that's what i wanted to share with you guys so we are at the end of this carbon bootstrap process now it is starting the servers basically it is stopping all the services now then it will again start the services so yeah So now it is creating the Galsync account and the cron tab for the extras. Okay, the Carbonium Bootstrap process finished. So let me clear the screen. Now what we are going to do is we are going to set up the service discover. For that, we are going to bind the IP address. Okay, service discover configuration is done. Now we are going to set up the pending setups. We'll use the cluster credential password that you created earlier. Okay. 
pending setup is done now we need to configure the postgresql for postgresql let me set the password first for the convenience because we are going to need the password quite a few times during this setup now we are going to create the role the role is created now we are going to create the database database is created now we are going to bootstrap the databases that we installed during the package installation at first the file database then the task database okay everything is done now we're going to do the memcache re bind address we don't want memcache to be open and listening to all everything so we're going to bind the memcache address to the IP address okay now we are going to restart the memcache service and after the memcache service we are going to restart the proxy service so proxy service By default, Zextras is the global admin address for Carbonio CE. But during the installation, a random password is set to that email address. To, so therefore, to log in with that email address, you need to change the password. So let's change the password. Just give me a minute. By the way, don't be confused about this. Hostname manage D, it provides the host name Jextras at the rate Jextras dot XYZ. So it's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the services. And one important thing whenever you have configured a email server an email server if the email server has and pub has a public IP address make sure you modify the trusted network otherwise the server will become an open relay and the exploiters will be able to send spam mails immediately as soon as the server becomes live and things will get messy so if it has a local ip address and you have set up a one-to-one -one net or any kind of redirection or forwarding then it's okay but if a public IP is configured into the interface of your server then you should configure the MPA networks for that I am going to modify my MPA networks before that uh, okay uh, let me you can check it the what is the current value of the MPA networks let me try to show you
okay if i go here execute this as you can see the full 24 block is allowed in my empty my trusted network therefore all the ip belong to this subnet is authorized to send mail using this server without any authentication and that's not a good thing because that those ip address has all the lots of lots of private ip behind them under their netting service so it's 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 a mess so be sure to modify it so now i'm going to modify it i am using my the command that i have prepared you can see hostname f that is the hostname hostname i the ip address Sorry. I oh sorry. Uh, I have to okay. Now I am going to restart the MTA. Okay. So now my trusted network is secure. So only whoever has login into the server with the authentication and credential can is allowed to send mail. Right now my server is not an open relay. So yeah. I will show you again the outcome of this command and the latest status of my trusted network. So okay. So Jextras. now you can see on i have allowed only this ip address so this is a key thing that you should do after configuring a server if it has a public ip address now many of our users has faced that okay after the configuration i when i check the units system units i find that carbonio prometheus nginx exporter service is not running system serial lists check that list units carbonio yes it's not running so what we are going to do is system ctl restart the prometheus service now again let's check the units now you can see all the units are running and everything is fine so with this we have completed the installation process let me let me make it a little smaller than so extras minus c okay uh, first console members Console member seems okay, so Jextras minus C ZM control minus V. Let me check the version. Version is 23.11. Now the status. As you can see, the all services are running. Now, let's not trust on that, but let's check with some mail transaction. 
okay so the thing is main dot z plus dot x y z is to the ps advance raise login as you are wondering that why it is taking so many time because the vps that i purchased is uh, from germany and i have quite a bit of latency from here so it takes quite a lot of time for me to load this i couldn't find an affordable vps around my zone so that is the point so okay this so far these are the addresses created by the system all these are system address let's open the admin account this is the admin account we will send an email from here you can see now the connection is not secured because we didn't install the let's encrypt certificate we will do that just let's check the let's check the uh, mail transaction test one from ubuntu 1.04 lts carbonio ce 23.11.0 test mail I've sent the mail uh, let me take it in my yeah I received the mail in my gmail let me replay it from here Messages replied. Thanks. Send. Mm, it has some waiting time, so I will have to wait a bit. Okay. Now let's see. Okay. I received the mail. And as you can see, message replied, thanks. So mail send receiving is okay. And you can see calendars, contacts, files, tasks, search, and settings. And so these things will, will be more improved with each release. So just stay tuned with us. I will share all the links in the description. So don't worry about it. So now the important thing let's encrypt certificate for let's encrypt certificate let me make it a little bit bigger for let's encrypt certificate what i am going to do is i will go to the admin panel virtual host i will set a virtual host here mail.jxtrust.xyz add save i have saved it step one setting the virtual host name now to jxtrust minus c zm proxy ctl restart i am restarting the proxy service okay restarting the proxy service is done 
now i am going to do another modification that is for security reason carbonyl ce only accepts connection through https but when we try to get the let's encrypt certificate the certificate authority authority tries to connect to your server through http therefore the server reviews the connection for that reason we are going to modify a configuration so that if any request comes to the http port of our of our server it will be redirected to the https to do that so the extras sorry so j extras carbonio group modify server zm host name zimbra reverse proxy mail mode if i write down something like this it will say that no the only allowed value is https or the redirect as you can see by the way this is an attribute i will try to create another video where i will describe the detail of attribute where you can find the all the attributes and how you can understand what value it supports and all the details so i'm not going into those things right now so for now i'm going to set it to redirect redirect sorry redirect as i modified the proxy configuration let me restart the proxy service don't worry about the warning and proxy service redirection is done so now we are going to upload and generate a certificate long chain generate certificate system is processing your certificate generation request and it will send the notification to the notification email and what is our notification email let's see if you have if you have multiple domains how can you find the notification email you can find the notification email through the cli as well as you can check them in the general settings it says domain system notification where you will find who, what is the notification address for your domain so okay let's and as you can see the certificate request is success without any hassle without any additional step what do you do it? let's just summarize it what do you do it? we set the virtual host name we restart the proxy service we set we modified the redirection then we restarted the proxy service now as the we got the certificate now we want to restart the proxy service once again so that it takes the effect so proxy service restart is done now let's see if i refresh this page you can see the icon turned into a verified icon and this one turned into a verified icon as well not only this you can also verify from the cli whether the certificate installation is done properly or not for that Certboard certificates. You can see 
this is the detail of of your certificates so that's how we can install the let's encrypt certificate without any hassle so just let me take one thing just let me check one thing uh, So all the informations you will find here. So as I mentioned earlier, definitely, definitely, definitely follow the instruction of the for the instruction of the official instruction page. So, okay, just give me a minute. Okay, yeah, so that's it. So, yeah, this is it. Uh, I hope this video can be useful for you. Still, as I am saying, that always follow the official documentation, but this video can be a good reference point for you whether you are following or doing the right steps or not so yeah thank you so much guys thank you so much for being or staying with me that long it's almost an hour so i hope you all good day and it's winter so take extra care of yourself and have a good day thank you so much bye bye